But the thing it takes, here's what I found. As you turn your Bible to the book of Revelation, we'll start there. That's what's up on the screen. Revelation 22. Here's what I found it takes. And the only person that I'll talk about publicly is Roy. Roy always lets me talk about him, whether he's here or, or not. Because Roy will tell you it takes honesty. Honesty. Which is a trait that is severely lacking in a lot of people's lives. It's a trait severely lacking in a lot of church pews. It's a trait severely lacking in a lot of pulpits. Which is why I don't mind telling you that there are days that I don't feel like being here. Because that's honesty. I don't want to put on a show. I don't want to smile like Joel Osteen and make you think I've said all positive things and thought positive thoughts, therefore positive, I have a positive outlook. I don't want to be that way. Because to me, that doesn't work. It's a joke. It makes him a millionaire and it makes him look good, but his life could be just as messed up as yours or anybody else's is, and he would never let you know it. But he would make you think that in order to get anything out of God, your life cannot be messed up. Which is not true. Jesus came and he sat with harlots and publicans and sinners. And the religious crowd hated his guts for it. But that's who he chose to sit with. That's who he chose to let him wash his hair. The guy's saying, Jesus, if you knew what kind of woman she was touching your feet, why, I'm sure you wouldn't have that. And Jesus said, you know, I've been sitting here in your house for an hour and you've never even offered me anything. And here is this woman. You know why she loves me so much? Because I have forgiven her of much. Yeah, raise your hand. So, Roy will tell you, I'll tell you, the hardest thing I ever had to do in life was to look at myself in the mirror and be honest. Hardest thing in the world to do. Be honest with me. Revelation 22, verse 14. Blessed are they that do His commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, may they enter in through the gates into the city, for without. Now, these are the people who are not allowed to go into God's holy city. Dogs. I'm sorry, but your dog's not going to heaven. Sorcerers are not going to heaven. Whoremongers are not going to heaven. Murderers are not going to heaven. And idolaters are not going to heaven. And then, whosoever, and it's two types of people here, loveth and maketh a lie. There are people who tell lies, and there are people who love lies. You know why they love lies? Makes them feel good. Because they don't want to face and deal with reality of how wrong they are. They don't want to deal with that. So they would rather believe a lie than believe the truth. 
Because truth hurts. Truth's hard to deal with. Especially when it's the truth about you and you don't want to deal with it. You'd rather go on living this fantasy land that even though you're steeped in sin, even though you're putting on a, a front in front of everybody, down deep inside, your heart is just looking for the next opportunity to sin. You're just living a lie. And you love it that way. And you want it to stay that way. And the Bible says, you're not going to heaven. You're not going. We know what the law says. Exodus chapter 20, verse 16. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Number one, you don't lie to your neighbor. Who's your neighbor? It's everybody's your neighbor. Don't lie to them. And number two, don't bear a false witness against them. Don't say to them or lead them to believe that you are a righteous Christian when in fact they know what goes on in your house because they live next door to you. And they hear what goes on at your house. You are bearing a false witness against them. They know you go to church. They know that you say you believe the Bible. They know that you say you're a Christian. And yet, they also know your sins. And you are bearing a false witness against them. And they look at you and they say, If that's Christianity, I want nothing to do with it. And you know what? Who blames them? Leviticus 19, neither deal falsely, neither lie one to another. You know what that deal falsely means? If you sell the car and the carburetor's messed up, you better tell them the carburetor's messed up. If you sell somebody a car and a transmission ain't worth nothing, you better tell them. I hope you get it home, transmission's in rough shape, you better... First thing you better do is better get a transmission in it. I don't know how to do it, but if you know somebody that can, have them put a transmission in it. This is why I'm only selling it for $300 and not $800, because it's going to need a new transmission in it. That means don't deal falsely with people. You know what that also means? Don't lie to the IRS. Now, I know they're the enemy. Amen. But they're the legal enemy. Don't lie to the IRS. Pay your taxes. Render unto Caesar what is Caesar's. Render unto God what is God's. You know what God hates? False balance. A false balance. False balance. That goes back to the days when you, were, you bought things in an open market and they measured out maybe your gold that you had to whatever merchandise you were buying or they, you, they, you say, I want a measure of flour or a measure of barley or I want a measure of bacon or whatever it was and either they tipped the scales to cheat you or... You know, back years ago, my dad, he used, to, he used to drink a lot of 905 beer. Well, that started coming in aluminum cans, and he started saving the aluminum cans. And I can remember he was saving the cans so he could recycle the cans because the price of aluminum was going up. So he had me out crushing cans. Had a big 4x4 four four post, Sterling. Had me out crushing cans because you could fit more in there. And he come home one day and he said, a guy told me this at work and he said, I'll think about trying it. Put a little bit of sand in the bottom of each one of those cans, that way they weigh more. And I'm going, yeah, that'd work. That's cheating. God hates that. 
That also goes to this idea where people say, well, I believe my good deeds outweigh my bad deeds. Uh, excuse me, your good deeds don't weigh near as much what you think they do. You've got a false balance and God hates it. Leviticus 19, 12. And ye shall not swear by my name falsely. Neither shalt thou profane the name of thy God, I am the Lord. Thou shalt not swear by my name falsely. That means don't make false promises to people about what God's going to do that God ain't going to do it. Don't lie about God. So this morning I'm going to preach on, the part I'm going to preach on this morning is about, not about truth, it's about lies. So turn to Daniel 2 and then we'll go to the Lord in prayer. Ezekiel, Psalms, Proverbs, he's, uh, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel. Chapter 2. King Nebuchadnezzar woke up one day, had a dream, and the dream left him. And he wanted to know what that dream was, and he had hired men he had been paying them well to always be his advisors and what they were they were they were astrologers and they were charmers and they were using occult practices they were using divination and that's always a big lie you know what you, you know what i've been tempted to do every year buy the buy the copy of the national Enquirer at the beginning of the year that says 20 amazing prophecies for 2020 and then wait till the end of the year to see how much of it actually came to pass. Because I guarantee you, most of it didn't. And then they would be lying about it. But then they, next year they'll say 21 things that will happen in 2021. And they, and they do that every year and people still buy it and they believe it. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, the longer sta I stand up here, Father, the harder it is for me to stand up here. And I am not going to be able to make it through this message without your help. I love you, God. And there's some things I understand, God. Of why I suffer the way I do sometimes. I understand it. I hate it. But if it has to be that way, then it has to be that way. But Father, I want to be a blessing to these people. I don't want to embarrass anybody. I don't want to call anybody's name out. I don't want to expose anybody. But Father, I do ask, Lord, that you deal with some people this morning. whoever I may have in my mind or on my list of people that need to hear this message, God, it is not my business. It is your business. You're the one who actually knows, not me. So, Father, help me to preach this message. Help me do it in love. But, Father, help me to do it. Help me to hold on and continue on. These people, Lord, have come a long way, and they've got a long way to go in life. And they don't know if they're going to make it or not, so would you rise up? And would you give us bread for a long journey through life? Father, just give us your word this morning. Bless us with it. Help us. Help us, dear God, to straighten up Quit living the lies. Bless your word, we pray in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen. Daniel chapter 2, verse 1. The second year of the reign of King Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar dreamed a dream, dreamed dreams, wherewith his spirit was troubled, and his sleep broke from him. I 
woke up troubled this morning, five o'clock this morning, woke up troubled. I don't know if it was a dream that I had, but I woke up troubled. And I've been troubled ever since in my spirit. And I'm going to be honest with you, days that I feel like this, there's usually a reason why. And uh, it's usually not good. So if that's the case, I'm not looking forward to finding out something that I might find out. But Nebuchadnezzar was dr- dreamed dreams and he was troubled and his sleep break from him. Then the king commanded to call, look at here, the magicians, the astrologers, the sorcerers, and the Chaldeans for to show the king his dreams. So they came and stood before the king. The king said unto them, I've dreamed a dream, and my spirit was troubled to know the dream. And then spake the Chaldeans to the king uh, in Syriac, O king, live forever. Tell thy servants the dream, and we will show the interpretation. The king answered and said to the Chaldeans, The thing is gone from me. If you will not make known unto me the dream with the interpretation thereof, you should be cut in pieces, and your houses shall be made a dunghill. But if you shall show the dream and the interpretation thereof, you shall receive of me gifts and rewards and great honor. Therefore, show me the dream and the interpretation thereof. God put it in Nebuchadnezzar's heart. God wanted Nebuchadnezzar to find out that the men that he hired to tell him the truth the whole time were lying to him. Nebuchadnezzar, for the first time in his life, was going to have to deal with what the truth was. He was not interested in make-believe fairy tale stories of what these men. He knew that if they concocted and made up some dream, you know, when they got into a huddle, okay, we need to we need to come up with something real quick. Let's pretend that he dreamed about this, and we'll tell him this, and we'll we'll make that what it is. And I think Nebuchadnezzar was never, ever, ever going to be satisfied with the lies he was going to be told. I think he wanted to know the truth. One of my questions to you this morning is, is that the kind of person you are? Do you want to know the truth? Do you want to be told the truth? Not... Man's version of it, not my version of it, not some other preacher's version of it, but God's version of the truth. God's truth is always truth, and there's no other truth than God's truth. And once confronted with God's truth, you've got a choice. You either believe it or you don't believe it. And if if you don't believe it, it's because you don't want to believe it, because you don't like what it says, because it means that there's something in your life that's wrong or that you're doing wrong, and you don't want to change that. You don't want to give that up. You don't, you don't want to let that go. And so you make a choice. I don't want to believe that and I don't want any part of it. And the thing, truth of it is, you'd rather, you would rather believe a lie and go to hell than you would to believe that what God said was the truth and let God make a change in your life that you're not capable of making so, and then you get to go to heaven. See, God confronted me multiple times with truths that I didn't want to hear. And upon being confronted with those truths, I told God, God, I, I would like to stand here and say, I promise you I'll never be this way again, but I can't do that. So God, is there a remedy for me? God says, I can help you. Good. Because I can't change what I am. I can't change what I've done. But I want to change and be better than I used to be. And God, I can't do it. Will you do it in me? And God says, I'll do it. To anybody who ever wants to know the truth, God will not only confront you with it, but he'll change you 
with it. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall. Let's have, a, let's have a Super Bowl war here about, is it make you free or set you free? Make you free. Let's make you free. You know what the difference is? You open the bird cage. The bird may not ever leave the cage, even though the door is open. But if you open the bird cage and reach in and grab the bird gently and pull him out, now he's free. That's the difference. Amen? Some people, the door's been open. You just never wanted to be free. We met a man out here that was going to die on our front yard that at the time we asked him, do you want change in your life? And he said, no. What I want is to get high again. He didn't want to be free. So Nebuchadnezzar the king told his servants, uh, let's see here, verse 6. If you show the dream and the interpretation thereof, you shall receive of me gifts and rewards and great honor. Therefore show me the dream and the interpretation thereof. They answered again and said, Let the king tell his servants the dream, and we will show the interpretation of it. The king answered and said, I know of a certainty that you would gain the time, because you see the thing is gone from me. But if you will not make known unto me the dream, there is but one decree for you, for you have prepared lying and corrupt words to speak before me till the time be changed. Therefore tell me the dream, and I shall know that you can show me the interpretation thereof. See, he had forgotten the dream. You know how we do with most dreams, we forget them. He had forgotten it, but he knew it was important. So he said to his guys, he said, if you can't tell me, if you can't tell me this one thing, I mean, surely you guys are in contact with the gods, right? Oh, yes, we're in contact with the gods all the time. Then the gods ought to be able to tell you what I dream. And they said, oh, king, no king's ever asked anybody to do that. He said, well, I am. And you're going to tell me the truth. And if you don't tell me the truth, I'm going to cut you all in pieces, feed you to the dogs. And it was Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and Daniel that prayed and said, God, we'd just soon not get our heads cut off today. Show us the dream. And God showed Daniel the dream, and God told Nebuchadnezzar the truth. And you know what? After that, his spirit was relieved. And he believed what he heard. And it took Daniel 1 and what happened there, and Daniel 2 what happened there, and Daniel 3 what happened there, and Daniel 4 what happened there. And I believe Nebuchadnezzar finally started worshiping the right God. I personally think that I'll meet Nebuchadnezzar in heaven. That's my personal opinion. I think he's up there. Because he realized who the real God was. He changed and got rid of all of his other gods and said there is only one God. It's the God of Daniel and Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego. And I think I'll see him there. Amen. So that's what the truth will do. Truth, the truth will change your religion. Will it not? Amen. Turn to Proverbs chapter 6. And then I'm really going to get into it. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 16. These six things that the Lord hate, yea, seven, are an abomination unto him. Number one, a proud look. Proud look. And I think all these seven go together. I think somebody who's got one's probably got all seven of them. Somebody with a proud look. They act like they're better than everybody else. And they act like their doo-doo don't stink. Amen. A proud look. God hates a lying tongue. A lying tongue. You want to know something? I've done it. I've done it. I'm not proud of it. But I've done it. 
hands that shed innocent blood, and heart that deviseth wicked imaginations, feet that be swift in running to mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, God hates them, and he that soweth discord among brethren. You know what sowing discord among brethren is? Somebody that stirs up lies in a church. Tries to get everybody to hate one another. How true is that? That's very true. Now, turn to Isaiah 59. Now, I was going to write into my notes at this point who we could be, who we lie to. But I think I, I, think I can handle it without writing it down. I think I, I think I know who we lie to. First of all, we lie to our spouses. We lie to our husbands. Or we lie to our wives. I'm not going to ask you to say amen, or I'm not going to say don't we, because I'm just going to say this is what people do. They lie to their spouse, they lie to their husband, they lie to their wife. Or, people lie to their neighbor. Their next door neighbor, their cross the street neighbor, their work neighbor, they lie to them. Or, they lie to the government about various things. They lie to the government. And you better watch that lying to the government. Government's got a lot more on you than you want to know about. Somebody say amen to that. They got a lot more on you than you want to know about. But we lie to the government. We lie to strangers. People lie to the preacher. People lie to the preacher all the time. And you know what? All I ever want to do is help you. It's all I ever want to do. I'm not looking to throw people out. I'm not looking to bring you up before the church and Look what they did. They told me this. I'm not looking to do that. There have been situations where I've taken someone biblically, privately, dealt with a sin, prayed and asked God forgiveness. And as far as it was concerned, it was over and done with. That's biblical, by the way. And after that, it's not anybody else's business. It's not to be brought up again. I would never bring it up again. I found out years ago, I looked into it. I'm legally bound. If you tell me something in confidence, and then I go tell everybody, 
you can have this whole church in the lawsuit because you'll win it. Okay? So, I mean, I get it. I understand why people lie to the preacher. But what I'm telling you is you don't have to. Not with me. Now, I'm not saying you got to tell me everything you do wrong. But if I ever heard something and I had to come to you, just tell me the truth. Just tell me the truth. Because once you do, you're free. Right? Because the truth makes you free. But people lie to the preacher. I remember one time when I was a boy, the preacher at the church at this time, on a Saturday, I saw him walking down our sidewalk. And I said, the preacher's coming. And my dad he had a beer in his hand. He went like that. And he went and hit it behind the chair. Like he wasn't doing nothing wrong. He was just hiding it from the preacher. All the preacher wanted to do was help him. Save him. Any good preacher, that's all they want to do. People will lie to themselves too, won't they? They lie to themselves. I can handle my sin, or I'm okay with it. I, I, I won't. I won't get caught. I won't get caught up in it. It won't control me. Or I'm not wrong doing it. They lie to themselves all the time. Then they lie to God. And I can tell you that is the stupidest thing to ever do is lie to God. Isaiah 59, verse 1. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save. God's got, a, God's got an arm that'll reach all the way from heaven, all the way down to you. He's that guy, what's that Marvel Comics guy, the Fantastic Four, the stretchy arm guy that can reach. He can reach all the way from heaven, right down to, all the way down in the pit you're in and pull you out. If you're telling the truth. God's hand's not shortened that it cannot save, neither is his ear heavy that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God. And your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. Are you hearing this? You want your prayers answered? You want God to help you? First thing out of your mouth is, God, I'm going to tell you the truth. Verse 3. For your hands are defiled with blood and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies. Your tongue hath muttered perverseness. That means you told dirty jokes and you cursed. And you lied about people and you gossiped. Verse 4, none calleth for justice, nor any pleadeth for the truth. They trust in vanity and speak lies. They conceive mischief 
and bring forth iniquity. You see that language, conceived and bring forth? That's birthing. You're having a baby. And the baby's called the man of sin, the son of perdition. Ichabod. You, that, and by the way, that is sowing and reaping talk is what that is. What you sow, you will reap. You sow lies, you will get lies reaped unto you. Uh, they conceive mischief, bring forth iniquity. They hatch cockatrice eggs and weave the spider's web. And he that eateth of their eggs dieth, and that which is crushed breaketh out into a viper. And their webs, so you know what, you're living with the snakes. Their webs shall not become garments, neither shall they cover themselves with their works. Their works are works of iniquity, and the act of violence is in their hands. Their feet run to evil, and they make haste to shed innocent blood. Their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity. Wasting and destruction are in their paths. Now, what, verse 8, right here. The way of peace they know not. And there was no judgment in their goings. They have made them crooked paths and whosoever goeth therein shall not know peace in crooked paths winding meandering you know what they say about people who lie all the time they have a hard time re keeping up with all the lies that they told cops know this Cops will interrogate somebody and as they lie, they forget the, the lie that they lied four, four or five lies ago and they've woven a crooked path and they have no idea where they're going. They're just mouthing off stuff. Whereas if you just tell the truth, you don't have a problem remembering where you was five minutes ago because it's the truth. But lies have a way of just fading away. Where'd you say you went? I, I, I don't remember. But they know not peace. So you will never, ever, ever have peace in your life. And you'll never, ever be able to walk a straight path living a lie. Now I'd like for you to bow your head, close your eyes. I have up here, all men are liars. And the verse, one of the verses is, let God be true and every man a liar. So this morning, with every head bowed and every eye closed, I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand. I'm not going to ask you to do anything. I am going to ask you to examine the life that you live. You could be a church member and live a lie. You could be a Sunday school teacher, church board member, deacon, preacher. And live a lie. You could be a husband, a wife, a child. And live a lie. It's time to stop lying. It's time to let God confront you with the truth. Now, it may sound like I'm preaching this message because I know something on somebody, but I really don't. But that's just how I think God's having me do it. Whether it's somebody here or whether it's somebody online. You're a liar. 
You're living a lie. Nobody knows it yet. But sure as the world is round, you will, you will reap what you sow. As sure as sun up's gonna come, the sun's going to come up in the morning, your lies will always catch up to you. So this morning, I'm going to ask you to pray. Pray like you've never prayed for before. Maybe you might take some days this week and fast and pray. And say, God, I can't live the lie anymore. So this morning, I'm going to pray for you. Like I love you. God loves you. I love you. And you know that all I ever wanted out of this church is people that will be honest. We have people who come to a Thursday night addictions Bible study who I will not point out to you but they come because they're being honest that they need help and God bless them for that and so to the rest of you whether you're here or you're online I want God to help you with that. With being honest. Not lying anymore. Father, I come before you today and I thank you, God, for allowing me to stand up here this morning. And I thank you, God, for laying a message on my heart that I'd I wasn't, that wasn't what I was going to preach, but you took that away from me and gave me this. And I'm not done with it, but Lord, I'll do what you tell me to do next Sunday. But Father, I love these people. I don't want them to think otherwise. I love them with all my heart. I, I love the people online. And Lord, I, I wouldn't have it any other way than for each one of them to come before you and say, God, I'm done living the lie. I can't do it anymore. Will you help me? Will you help my wife? Will you help my husband? Will you help my children? Or maybe the children, they're praying to God this morning. God, help me to start being honest to my mom and dad. Maybe I wouldn't get a whipping if I told them the truth. And Father, I just pray, dear God, that you would help somebody today. Start being honest with you, with others, and with themselves. I pray this in the name of Jesus, our Lord, our Savior. We thank you that he came and told us the whole truth. And everything that he said in his word, we can trust it to be the truth. So, Father, bless your word today. For this we pray in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen. Would you stand to your feet, please?